Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about maps concept. Maps in Golang A map is a data structure that provides you with an unordered collection of key value pairs. Maps are also sometimes called associative arrays in PHP, hash tables in Java, or dictionaries in Python. Maps are used to look up a value by its associated key. You store values into the map based on a key. The strength of a map is its ability to retrieve data quickly based on the key. A key works like an index pointing to the value you associate with that key. A map is implemented using a hash table, which is providing faster looks up on the data element and you can easily retrieve a value by providing the key. Maps are unordered collections and there is no way to predict the order in which the key value pairs will be returned. Every iteration over a map could return a different order. You can see maps in the following table. Key has to be distinct in a map. Value can occur in duplicates. You can access the key value pair of a map using key. Key in a map acts like an index in an array. Maps specification Golang Maps is a collection of unordered pairs of key value. It's widely used because it provides fast lookups and values that can retrieve, update, or delete with the help of keys. It is referenced to a hash table. Due to its reference type, it is inexpensive to pass. For example, for a 64-bit machine, it takes 8 bytes, and for a 32-bit machine, it takes 4 bytes. In maps, the values are not unique like keys and can be of any type like int, float64, room, string, pointer, reference type, map type, and etc. In maps, you can only add value when the map is initialized. If you try to add value in the uninitialized map, then the compiler will throw an error. The other maps specification. In the maps, a key must be unique and always in the type which is comparable using equal to operator or the type which support not equal to operator. So most of the built-in type can be used as a key like an int, float64, room, string, comparable array and structure, pointer and etc. The data types, lock, slice, and non-comparable arrays and structs or the custom data types which are not comparable don't use as a map key. The type of keys and type of values must be of the same type. Different types of keys and values in the same maps are not allowed, but the type of key and the type values can differ. And the map is also known as a hashed map, hash table, unordered map, dictionary, or associative array. Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about maps specification. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's map concept. Creating and initializing maps. In Go language, maps can create and initialize using two different ways. First way, simple. In this method, you can simply create a mass using the given syntax. You can see the syntax for creating an empty map. And you can see the creating map with key value pair by simple way. In maps, 
The zero value of the map is nil, and a nil map doesn't contain any key. If you try to add a key value pair in the nil map, then the compiler will throw runtime error. Now go to VS Code to illustrate how to create and initialize maps by the simple way. Okay, first create a project folder like maps and create a file like main.go. Create package and create main function. First define an empty map without initializing. Now do the following code var empty map equals map int type string and without initializing. Now display the created map fp empty map and set the variable empty map now define a map variable and initialize it go to the next line and create var for the example my map equals map key is int and value is a string Now initialize it for the example key is 1 and value is key. Then put a comma and write other key value first. 1, column, key, set comma, 2, column, g, set comma, 3, column, Robert, Set comma four colon gym and five colon for the example Edward and set the com. Reformat the code and display the created variable my map fp my map my map we create two variables first empty map without initializing and second my map by initializing and the key for it is int and the value of it is a string save the project go to the terminal first clear screen go to the folder projects cd maps and execute the project by the command main.go now we can see the output for the empty map variable we have nil because we don't initialize map variable and for the my map variable we have one king two jim three robert and four again jim because we can duplicate a value and five is edward now we could define empty map and creating and initializing an another map by a simple way. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about creating and initializing maps by simple way. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's map concept. Creating and initializing maps using make function. You can also create a map using make function. This function is an inbuilt function and in this method you just need to pass the type of the map and it will return an initialized map. You can see the syntax. 
Now go to VS Code to illustrate how to create an initialize map using make function. For the example, creating a map using make function to store students' scores. Var my map equals make function map key is a string and value is float 64 as we already know that make function always returns a map which is initialized so we can add value in it go to the next line my map for the example key is keen and value is 80.55 go to the next line and add another value my map for the example key is gene and value is 90.33 go to the next line and the other element my map for the example key is robert and value is 75.60 okay reformat the code now display the map elements fp my map colon and my map variable save the project and execute the code now we can see the output for Kim score is 80.55 and Jim score is 90.33 and for Robert score is 75.60 we could define a map for storing students scores by the make function the student's name were stored in the map as index and their score as value in the map. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about creating and initializing a map variable by the make function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other maps concept. Map links. To determine how many items, key value pairs, a map has, use built-in length function. Now you can see the sample. Go to VS Code to illustrate how to use built-in land function. For the example, creating a map using make function to store employees marks and set string types as index and set int type as value. Var employee equals make function map square brackets set a string as index and set int as value now go to the next line and initialize the map employee index for the example kim and value is 10 go to the next line employee Key is gene, value is 20, and in the next line, and another element, employee, Robert, and value is 30. And create again an empty map. Go to the next line, employee list column equals make and map key is a string and value is int 
Now we want to see lengths of two map variables by the len function. First variable initialize and second variable don't initialize. Go to the next line. fp len function for the employee and go to the next line fp using len function for the employee list reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output for employee map the length is 3 because it has 3 values and for the employee list the length is 0 because it doesn't have any value and the length function will return 0 for an uninitialized map now go to slides and continue accessing items you can access the items of a map by referring to its key name inside square brackets now you can see the sample go to VSCO to illustrate how to access map items first clear the last code save the project for the example creating a map to store person's id and set int type as index and set a string type as a value var employee equals map type index is int and value index is a string and initialize the variable for the example a hundred column king and two hundred column value is gym and third element three hundred column and value is Robert. We format the code and go to the next line. Now we access the map items by calling index in square brackets. So do the following fp set name of map and put the selected index in square brackets. For the example, employee square brackets and set the index for the example 100. Reformat the code and save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we put an index in square brackets and get the value of that index in this case we set 100 as index and return Kim as value now we could define a map and access to its items in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about map adding, updating, and deleting items. Add. In maps, you are allowed to add key value pairs in the initialized map using the given syntax. Now you can see the syntax. Update. In maps, if you try to add an already existing key, then it will simply override or update the value of that key within the new value. And delete. The built-in delete function deletes an item from a given map associated with the provided key. You can see the syntax for delete function. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to map adding, updating, and deleting items. First, creating and initializing a map to store person's IDs. My map colon equals map 
type index is int and value type is a string and initialize by values 10 colon 14 and 20 colon for gene set comma go to the next line 30 colon for the robert 40 colon value edward and the end element 50 colon and the value for the example sophia now display the created map fp my map and set the variable my map reformat the code and save the projects first we create a map initialize it and display it now adding new key value pairs in the map go to the next line and for the example my map set index 60 and initialize it by the value for the example jack go to the next line and define another element my map set index 70 and initialize it by julia go to the next line and display our map again because the map elements has changed fp my map after adding new elements and set my map variable reformat the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output before adding elements my map variables has values 10 king 20 jim 30 robert 40 edward and 50 sophia and after the adding two variables my map variables has values 10 king 20 jim 30 robert 40 edward 50 sophia and 60 jack and 70 julia now we could add new items to our map Go to updating values of the map and initialize new values to existing index. For the example, index 20 is exist and we change its value. Go to the code. My map index 20 and change its values to, for the example, Diego. Go to the next line and again display the variable values fp my map after changing values and set the variable my map save the project and execute again Now we can see the output and we could change index 20 value from Jim to Diego. Now go to delete an element from map. Go to code. Now use from delete function. This function has two parameters. First is name of your map and second is index of element that you want to delete it. For the example, we want to remove index 50 and its values from map. Go to display the map again. FP my map after deleting index 50. 
and set the variable reformat the code and save the project and execute again the program now we can see the output index 50 and its value has deleted from our map okay we could add new items in map, update existing elements by index, and delete existing elements by the delete function via index in our map. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about map adding, updating, and deleting items. In this session, we want to talk about the other maps concept. Iterate over a map. We can iterate a map using the range for loop. The value of this loop may vary because the map is an unordered collection. The for range loop statement can be used to fetch the index and element of a map. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to iterate the map using for range loop. First create and initialize a map. For the example, my map colon equals map type of index is int and type of value is a string and initialize for the example 10 colon king 20 colon edward 30 colon robert 40 colon Alex and the end 50 colon David now iterate map using four range loop so do the following code four set ID for index and name for value ID name colon equals range map variable my map and display id and name for each element ff id percent d backslash t for a space between id and name and name percent is lowercase and backslash n and set id and name reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we could display a map elements by using four range loop it is important to note that a map is an unordered set and when displaying element in it, the elements may be displayed unordered in the output. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about iterate over a map. And in this session, we want to talk about the other maps concept. Sort map keys. A keys slice created to store keys value of map and then sort the slice. The sorted slice used to print values of map in key order. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to sort a map by keys. 
First, create a map and initialize it. For the example, unsorted map colon equals map index type is int and value type is a string and initialize the variable 30 colon kin 50 colon g 40 colon alex 20 colon diego and end element 10 colon jack create a slice for a store indexes of map and the length of it is equal to length of map variable now keys colon equals make function and set the type int length zero and capacity is len function on sorted map now go to the next line and append map keys in new slice so do the following for i colon equals range in unsorted map and keys equal append keys i reformat the code go to the next line and now sort s lines by the sort package because in this sample keys are integers so we use from ints function from sort package to sort keys sort package dot ints and set the variable keys now iterate the slice elements go to the next line for index is underscore and for the example value colon equals range keys and fp value comma on sorted map index value reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we could sort the map elements based on the keys by creating a, a slice okay now go to a slide and continue sort map values to sort the key values of a map you need to store them in a slice and then sort the slice now go to VS Code to illustrate how to sort a map by values first clear the last code create a map and initialize it for the example unsorted map variable colon equals map index type is int and value type is a string initialize it now create a slice for a store values of map and the length of it is equal to length of map variable values colon equals make a string zero and len unsorted map now append map values in new slice do the following for instead of index set underscore comma value colon equals range in unsorted map values 
append values by value now sort a slice by the sort package because in this sample values are a string so we use from a strings function from sort package sort dot strings and set the values now iterate the slice elements by the following code for value colon equals range in values and display value reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we could sort the map elements based on the values by creating a, a slice Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about sort map. And in this session, we want to talk about the others map concept. Truncate map. There are two methods to clear all items from a map. First, remove all keys via the for loop. And second, define the make function for the existing map variables. Now go to VS Code to illustrate how to truncate map. First, create a map and initialize it. My map colon equals map set int as an index type and set a string as a value type and initialize it 10 colon team 20 colon gene 30 colon alex now display the created map variable for index comma value colon equals range in my map and display by the command ff index percent d backslash t for a space between index and value value percent s and backslash n set index and value reformat the code and save the project now we want to delete all keys by for loop and delete function go to the next line and for i colon equals range in my map and delete my map and set index i now display my variable again fp my map after deleting go to the next line and fp my map reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output first we display all elements of map and then truncate and display it and we see all elements of map variable have deleted
In second method, we want to use make function to truncate the map variable. First clear the last code and remove the delete function, create a variable and initialize it, display the elements of it. In this case, we set make function in right hand of existing map variable. My map equals make function set int as index and set a string as value type save the project and execute the code again now we can see the output in this case also we display all elements of map and then truncate map variable by the make function and display it and we see all elements of map variable have deleted in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about truncate map. And in this session, we want to talk about the other maps concept. Merge maps. The keys and values of second map getting added in first map. Now go to VS Code to illustrate how to merge maps together. First create two map variables and initialize them. For the example first, colon, equals map int and a string and initialize it 10 column king 20 column g and 30 column alex and define another map variable second column equals map set int and set a string as value type and initialize it for t column robert 20 column jim 50 Colin, Julia, and 60, Colin, for the example, Diego. Now use a for loop in second map variable and put the value of second variable in first variable by the following code. For i, comma, j, colon equals range, in second variable and first variable set index i and equals to j now display the elements of first map variable for i j column equals range in first variable and display all elements ff index column percent d backslash t for a space between index and value and value percent s backslash n and set the variable i and j Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output, and we could add second variable elements into first variable elements. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye.
Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the functions concept. Functions in Golang A function is a group of statements that exist within a program for the purpose of performing a specific task and return the result to the caller. A function can also perform some specific task without returning anything. Every Go program has at least one function, which is main. You can divide your code into separate functions. How you divide your code among different functions is up to you, but logically the division should be such that each function performs a specific task. Functions can make your application modular. Golang supports functions. The Go standard library provides numerous built-in functions that your program can call. For example, the function len takes arguments of various types and returns the length of the type. Function declaration. A declaration begins with the fine keyword, followed by the name you want the function to have, a pair of parentheses, and then a block containing the function's code. The declaration of the functions contains func function name, parameters, return type, function body, Func that it starts the declaration of a function. Function name. It's the actual name of the function. The function name and the parameter list together constitute the function signature. Parameters. A parameter is like a placeholder. When a function is invoked, you pass a value to the parameter. This value is referred to as actual parameter or argument. The parameter list refers to the time, order and number of the parameters of a function. Parameters are optional, that is a function may contain no parameters. Return type. A function may return a list of values. The return types is the list of data types of the values the function returns. Some functions perform the desired operations without returning a value. Function body. It contains a collection of statements that define what the function does. Points to remember. A name must begin with a letter and can have any number of additional letters and numbers. A function name cannot start with a number. A function name cannot contain spaces. If the functions with the names that start with an uppercase letter will be exported to other packages. If the function name starts with a lowercase letter, it won't be exported to other packages. But you can count this function within the same package. If a name consists of multiple words, each word after the first should be capitalized, like this display name and print address and etc. Function names are case sensitive. For the example, print, print by the first uppercase and print by the all letters uppercase are three different variables. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about function declaration. And in this session, we want to talk about the others function concept. Creating a simple function. A declaration function begins with the fine keyword, 
followed by the name you want the function to have, a pair of parentheses, and then a block containing a function's code. Simple function takes no parameter and returns no values. Now go to VS Code and illustrate how to create a simple function. First create a project folder for the example named function and create a file main.go create package package main First create a simple function that has not parameters and return values. For the example, func set a name like simple function, a pair of parentheses, and curly brackets. Now we can define a simple function without any parameters and return values. Here just print a hello world as a statement. fp hello world. Save the project. It's time to calling a function. While creating function, you give a definition of what the function has to do. To use a function, you will have to call the function to perform the defined task. When a program calls a function, the program control is transferred to the called function. A called function performs a defined task and when its return statement is executed or when its function ending closing brace is reached, it returns the program control back to the main program. Now create a main function and invoke define function inside in. Funk main and now invoke the simple function. Simple function. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. First go to the function package, cd function and run the program. Go run.backslash.main.go Now we can see the output. We could define a function named simple function that has no parameters and no return values and call this function inside main function and execute in as C the value of a statement that is hello world. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about create a simple function. In this session, we want to talk about the other functions concept. Function with parameters. Parameters are specified within the pair of parentheses in the function definition, separated by commas. When we call the function, we supply the values in the same way. A parameter is just like a variable. Parameters are specified after the function name, inside the parentheses. You can add as many parameters as you want inside the function. Now you can see the syntax. Go to VS Code program and illustrate how to use function with parameters. First creating a function with two parameters of int type that adds together. For the example, func add x type of it is int and y type of it is int. Now define a variable named total that stores sum of two variables. Total colon equals x plus y. Now display the value of total variable. ff 
total of x plus y equals percent d lowercase and sets the variable total reformat the code and save the project now go to the main function and invoke the add function add and set two int values as arguments inside it for the example 20 and 30 now reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we could define a function named add that accept two int values as parameters and sum them together and display result of it important note if the functions with names that start with an uppercase letter will be exported to other packages if the function name starts with a lowercase letter it won't be exported to other packages but you can call this function within the same package in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about function with parameters. And in this session, we want to talk about the others function concept. Function with return type. A return is a value that a function returns to the calling function that incompletes its task. You use the return statement to send the value back to user-defined function. You can return the value as a literal value or within a variable. When a function returns a value to the user-defined function, you must store that value in either a local or global variable. Now you can see the syntax. So, go to VS Code program and illustrate how to use function with return type. First, creating a function with two parameters of int type that adds together a return and int value. func add set parameters type like x by the type int and y by the type int and out of the parentheses set the return type int go to the body of function define a variable named total that stores sum of two variables total colon equals x plus y go to the next line and return total variable as return type return total variable now save the project and go to the main function and invoke add function inside it go to the main function calling add function and set two int values as arguments inside it and set the return value of function in a variable for the example create a variable for return value and invoke the add function first add set two arguments for the example 20 comma 30 this function returns an int type value so assign this function to a variable for the example sum colon equals and display value of sum variable ff sum of x plus y equals person d lowercase and set the variable sum here save the project and execute the program now we can see the output sum of x plus y equals 50 in this sample the add function takes input of two integer numbers and returns an integer values as sum of them together 
In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about function with return type. And in this session, we want to talk about the other functions concept. Functions as values. Go programming language provides the flexibility to create functions on the fly and use them as values. In this case, we have initialized a variable with a function definition. Now you can see the syntax. It's time go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use Go functions as values. Now declare a function variable by the following code. First create a variable and then initialize it by a function. For the example, square colon equals func do not define function name and immediately set parameters and return type for the function for the example x and type of it is float cc4 as parameter and float 64 as return type now define body statement for function for this case, purpose of this function variable is just to use inbuilt math.sqrt function. Return math package dot sqrt and set the variable x inside it. Okay, now we could define a function and assign it to a variable like a square now go out of the square variable and display this variable value for the example fp invoke the variable a square and set a value for it for the example 9 reformat the code and save the project and execute the code now we can see the output we could define a function as a value first we define a variable and set the function inside it without name and invoke created variable and pass a float 64 parameter to it and fetch the result in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about functions as values. In this session, we want to talk about the other functions concept. Returning multiple values. In Go language, you are allowed to return multiple values from a function using the return statement. Or in other words, in function, a single return statement can return multiple values. The type of the return values is similar to the type of the parameter defined in the parameter list. Now you can see the syntax. Function name, it is the name of the function. Parameter list. It contains the name and the type of the function parameters. Return type list, it's optional and it contains the types of the values that function returns. If you are using return type in your function, then it's necessary to use a return statement in your function. Return values. 
A function can have one or more return values. Assume there is a function sum underscore avg that returns two values, sum and average. Note that when returning multiple values, the returning value type has to be enclosed within parentheses. You can see sample for this case. As a convention, a row is returned as the last argument in a function. You can see the sample for this case and collecting multiple return values in the color function, like following sample. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use return multiple values. In this case, we want to calculate rectangle area and perimeter by a function. First create function for this purpose by the following code. Func rect angle for the example w type of it is int and h type of it is int w and h as parameters by int type and set to int type as return types int comma int First, calculate rectangle perimeter. For the example, perimeter column equals two multiplication w plus h. And calculate rectangle area. And in the next line, area column equals w multiplication h. Now return area and perimeter variable. Return area and perimeter. Now create a main function for invoke the rectangle function. So go to the main function and first creating local variable definition and initialization. Var a comma b type of them is int now calling rectangle function and set return values in two variable a and b as perimeter and area of rectangle a comma b equals invoke rectangle function rectangle and set the variables for the example 20 and 30 now display variable go to the next line if p area and a and go to the next line fp perimeter and set b reformat the code and save the project and execute the program Now we can see the output area is 600 and perimeter is 100. In the following example, we have a rectangle function that takes two parameters, computes the rectangle perimeter and area, and returns all the two values. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about returning multiple values. And in this session, we want to talk about the others functions concept. Function arguments. In Go language, the parameters passed to a function are called actual parameters. Whereas the parameters received by a function are called formal parameters. By default, Go language use call by value method to pass arguments in function. Go
Go language supports two ways to pass arguments to your function. First is called by value and second is called by reference. Call by value. The call by value method of passing arguments to a function copies the actual value of an argument into the formal parameter of the function. In this case, changes made to the parameter inside the function have no effect on the arguments. By default, Go programming language uses call by value method to pass arguments. In general, this means that code within a function cannot alter the arguments used to call the function. Now go to VS Code and illustrate how to use call by value. First, creating a swap function that takes two parameters and changes them together. Funk for the example swap x and y is int type and return type is int. First, create a var temp. Var temp type is int. And save the value of x in temp. Temp equals x. And put y value variable into x. x equals y. And now put temp into y. Y equals temp. And return temp variable value. Return temp. Reformat the code and save the project. Now create a main function for invoke the swap function. So go to the main function. First creating local variable definition and initialization. For the example, var a int equals 100 and go to the next line. And second variable definition, var b type of it is int again equals 200. Display this variable before swap. ff before swap a equals percent d and b equals percent d and set variable a e. Now calling a swap function to swap these values. Swap and pass variable a and b to it. a and b. Now display this variable after swap. ff after swap a variable equals percent d and b variable equals percent d and set the variables a and b again reformat the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output before swap a equals 100 and b equals 200 and after swap, A equals 100 and again B equals 200. It shows that there is no change in the values although they had been changed inside the function. In this parameter passing method, values of actual parameters are copied to functions formal parameters and the two types of parameters are stored in different memory locations. So any changes made inside functions are not reflected in actual parameters of the color. Now go to a slide and continue. Second, call by reference. The call by reference method of passing arguments to a function copies the address of an argument into the formal parameter. 
inside the function the address is used to access the actual argument used in the call this means that changes made to the parameter affect the past argument to pass the value by reference argument pointers are passed to the function just like any other value now go to VS Code and illustrate how to use call by reference First, clear the last code. Save the project and ready to write. First, we need to declare the function parameters as pointer types, as in the following function swap, which exchanges the values of the two integer variables point to by its arguments. For the example, func swap and set the variable x and the type of it is pointer int asterisk int comma and variable y asterisk int the type of it is pointer of int define the temp variable var temp type of it is int go to the next line and save the value at address x temp equals asterisk x and put y into x pointer x equals pointer y now put 10 variable into y variable asterisk y equals temp reformat the code and save the project now create a main function for invoke the swap function so go to the main function first creating local variable definition and initialization for the example var a int equals a hundred and go to the next line var b int equals 200 now display these variable before swap for the example ff before swap a equals percent d and b equals percent d and set variable a and b go to the next line and calling a function to swap the values swap and set the variable a and b as a pointer ampersand a comma ampersand b ampersand a indicates pointer to a means address of variable a and ampersand b indicates pointer to b means address of variable b now display this variable after swap ff after swap a equals percent d and b equals percent d and set the variable a and b now reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output before swap a equals 100 and b equals 200 but after swap a equals 200 and b equals 100 it shows that the change has reflected outside the function as well unlike call by value where the changes do not reflect outside the function both the actual and formal parameters refer to the same locations so any changes made inside the functions are actually reflected in actual parameters of the caller in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye
Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about function arguments. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's functions concept. Anonymous function in Go language. Go language provides a special feature known as an anonymous function. An anonymous function is a function which doesn't contain any name. It's useful when you want to create an inline function. In Go language, an anonymous function can form a closer. An anonymous function is also known as function literal. Now you can see the syntax. In this case, we want to examine the different states of the anonymous function. First, simple anonymous function. Second, in Go language, you are allowed to assign an anonymous function to a variable. Third, you can also pass arguments in the anonymous function. And fourth, function defined to accept a parameter and return value. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create an anonymous function. First, simple anonymous function. First, write the func keyword open and close parentheses and curly brackets. Now write our codes in body of func for the example fmt.println and set a message and end of close bracket sets another open and close parentheses and execute the program now do this sample func open and close parentheses curly brackets and end of the close brackets put open and close parentheses again and in the body of function write your statements for the example fp welcome to go programming language reformat the code and save the project execute the code now we can see the output welcome to go programming language we could define an anonymous function and execute it and see the printed message second state in Go language, you are allowed to assign an anonymous function to a variable. First, clear the last code. Define a local variable like result, colon equals, and create an anonymous function and assign it to defined variable. func, open and close parentheses, curly brackets, and display a message by printf function fp welcome to go language when you assign a function to a variable then the type of the variable is a function type and you can call the variable like a function call as shown in this case result open and close parentheses reformat the code and save the project and execute the program now we can see the output welcome to go language first we define an anonymous function and assign it to a variable so type of variable changes to function type then invoke variable as a function an anonymous function execute and see the printed message Third state, you can also pass arguments in the anonymous function. First, clear the last code. Define an anonymous function. func, open parentheses, and set parameters as passing arguments in anonymous function, like name as a string type. And go to the body of function and display the created parameter by the print function for example fp name 
put an open and close parentheses and in this parentheses we initialize our parameters for the example welcome to go language reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output welcome to go language in this case we define an anonymous function and set a parameter and initialize it so we could pass arguments in the anonymous function and force function defined to accept a parameter and return value first clear the last code we want to return value of area of rectangle and display it first write a display message and create an anonymous function inside it for the example ff rect angle area by 10 value equals percent d backslash n and here for initialize the conversion character we create an anonymous function that return a value so do the following func for the example a parameter like w by type of int and return value int and curly brackets and we want to calculate rectangle area so return w multiplication w and end of curly brackets in the parentheses set the parameter for the example 10 value reformat the code and save the project and execute the program now we can see the output rectangle area by 10 value equals 100 we could define an anonymous function that accept a parameter and return a value we have reached the end of this session i hope you have taken full advantage of this session until next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the pointers concept. Pointers in Golang Pointers in Go Programming Language is a variable which is used to store the memory address of another variable. Pointers in Golang is also termed as the special variables. The variables are used to store some data at a particular memory address in the system. The memory address is always found in hexadecimal format. Pointers in Go are easy and fun to learn. Some Go programming tasks are performed more easily with pointers and other tasks such as call by reference cannot be performed without using pointers. So, it becomes necessary to learn pointers to become a perfect Go programmer. As you know, every variable is a memory location and every memory location has its address defined which can be accessed using ampersand operator, which denotes an address in memory. Consider the following example which will print the address of the variable defined. A pointer is a special kind of variable which is not only used to store the memory addresses of other variables, but it also points where the memory is located and provides ways to find out the value stored at the memory location. It is generally termed as a special kind of variable because it is almost declared as a variable, but with asterisk or dereferencing operator. Declaration and initialization of pointers 
There are two important operators which we will use in pointers. First, asterisk operator, also termed as the dereferencing operator, used to declare pointer variable and access the value stored in the address. And second, ampersand operator, termed as address operator, used to return the address of a variable or to access the address of a variable to a pointer. The general form of a pointer variable declaration is var, var name, and a star var type. Here, type is the pointer's base type. It must be a valid C data type, and var name is the name of the pointer variable. The asterisk you use to declare a pointer is the same asterisk that you use for multiplication. However, in this statement, the asterisk is being used to designate a variable as a pointer. Following are the valid pointer declaration. The actual data type of the value of all pointers, whether integer, float, or otherwise, is the same, a long hexadecimal number that represents a memory address. The only difference between pointers of different data types is the data type of the variable or constant that the pointer points to. Now go to VS Code and illustrate how to declare and initialize pointers. First create a project folder for the example pointer and create a file like main dot go package main and create main function func main first define an actual variable declaration var a int equals 20 and second define pointer variable declaration for the example var name of it p and type of it asterisk int now store address of a variable in pointer variable p equals ampersand a variable now display address of a variable ff address of a variable percent x lowercase and backslash n and set the address of a variable ampersand a go to the next line and display address that is stored in pointer variable ff address stored in p variable percent x lowercase backslash n and set the variable p we format the code and save the project for access the value of pointer using the asterisk this is dereferencing a pointer using asterisk operator before a pointer variable to access the value stored at the variable at which is pointing. Now display value of pointer variable by the following code ff value of a star p variable percent d backslash n and set the star p now reformat the code save the project and execute the program first go to the project folder cd pointers and run the project by go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output. First, we see address of a variable by the hexadecimal format. 
and then address is stored in p variable by the hexadecimal and third we see value of star p variable that is 20. when the above code is compiled and executed it produces the following result first we could define an actual variable named a then define a pointer named p and store address of a variable in pointer variable after it display address of actual variable by ampersand symbol and display pointer address by accessing p variable and display value of pointer by accessing asterisk symbol in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about declaration and initialization of pointers. In this session, we want to talk about the others pointers concept. Nil pointers in Go. Go compiler assign a nil value to a pointer variable in case you don't have exact address to be assigned. This is done at the time of variable declaration. A pointer that is assigned nil is called a nil pointer. The nil pointer is a constant with a value of zero defined in several standard libraries. To check for a nil pointer, you can use an if statement as follows. Now go to VS Code and illustrate how to declare nil pointers. First define a pointer variable var p star int. Now do the following code for check nil or not. If p equals equals nil so display the message ff the value of b is percent x lowercase backslash n and p reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output. The value of p is 0. On most of the operating systems, programs are not permitted to access memory at address 0 because that memory is reserved by the operating system. However, the memory address 0 has a special significance. It signals that the pointer is not intended to point to an accessible memory location. But by convention, if a pointer contains the nil or zero value, it is assumed to point to nothing. Now go to slides and continue. Changing pointer value. You can also change the value of the pointer or the memory location instead of assigning a new value to the variable. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate the above mentioned concept. First clear the last code and save the project. It's ready to write code. First, create a variable using var keyword and we are not defining any type of variable. For the example, var a equals 458. Now taking a pointer variable using var keyword without specifying the type. var p equals ampersand a variable. Display value of A variable and address of A variable and pointer P before changing. FP value stored 
in a variable equals a go to the next line fp address of a variable equals ampersand a and go to the next line fp value stored in pointer p equals and set the variable p here reformat the code and save the project now using asterisk operator before a pointer variable to access the value store at the variable at which it is pointing now write the code fp value stored in star p before changing equals star p save the project go to terminal and execute the program until here now we can see the output value stored in a variable equals 458 address of a variable and value stored in pointer p are the hexadecimal format and value stored in asterisk p before changing equals 458 now go to code and change value of pointer go to the next line changing the value of a variable by assigning the new value to the pointer a star p equals for the example 500 and go to the next line and again display the value stored in asterisk p fp value stored in star p after changing equals and set the variable a reformat the code save the project and go terminal and execute again now we can see the output value stored in star p after changing equals 500 in this example we first define a variable and initialize it then put the address of that variable inside a pointer now by changing the pointer value we will see that the value inside the initial variable also changes in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about nil pointers and changing pointer value. And in this session, we want to talk about the other pointers concept. Sending a variable to a function in Go. Pointers in Go programming language or Golang is a variable which is used to store the memory address of another variable. You can also pass the pointers to the function like the variables. There are two ways to do this as follows. First, copy value. In copy value case, which is the normal state, when you pass the value of a variable to a function, any change to the value of the variable has no effect on the variable sent because a copy of that variable is sent to the function. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use copy value and passing it to the function. First create a function with integer type as parameter 
for the example print function func print a type of it int as a parameter now initialize it by 500 a equals 500 now go to create a main function define a normal variable and initialize it var x equals 100 now display value of variable b for calling by function ff the value of x b for function call is percent d backslash n and set the variable x go to the next line and calling the function by variable print and set variable x inside it as arguments go to the next line and again display the value of x after call function ff the value of x variable after function call is person d backslash n and set the variable x reformat the code save the project and execute the program Now we can see the output. Before calling function, the value of x is 100, and after calling function, the value of x is 100. We see in the output that no change is made to the variable passed to the function, because in this case, a copy of the variable is sent to the function. Now go to a slide and continue. Second, reference value. In this case, in fact, the address of the a variable is sent to a function, and any change on the variable inside the function, which is sent as a pointer, will cause a change on the main variable. Now go to VS Code program to create a pointer and passing it to the function. First, clear the last code. Save the project and it's ready to write. First, taking a function with integer type pointer as a parameter. For the example, we call display function and set an integer pointer as parameter. func display a and set a type for it as asterisk int as a pointer. Now initialize it by 500. Asterisk a equals 500. So we create a function by an int pointer parameter and initialize it. Now go to create main function. Go to main function. Define a normal variable and initialize it by, for the example, 100. Var x equals 100. Now display value of variable before calling by function ff value of x before function call is person d backslash n and set the variable x now calling the display function by passing pointer to function and we send address of variable x as parameter for the example display and set ampersand x and go to the next line and again display value of variable x after calling by function ff value of x after function 
call is person d backslash n and set the variable x reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output value of x before function call is 100 and after calling function value of x is 500 in the output we see that the value of the variable sent to the function has changed because the address of the variable has been sent to the function and the change on it has caused a change in the main variable in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
P3 and set the result 3 variable here okay we will now compare the addresses of the pointer variables together for the example addresses of two pointers of P1 and P2 define result for colon equals ampersand P1 equal to ampersand P3 and display the result for FP result for is P1 equal P3 and set the result for here 1 and P2 and the other compression for the example compression between P1 and P2 result 5 colon equals ampersand P1 equal to ampersand P2 and display the result 5 FP result 5 is P1 equal P2 and set the variable result 5 and another compression for the example between P2 and P3 result 6 colon equals ampersand P2 equal to ampersand P3 and display the result FP result 6 is P2 equal P3 and set the result 6 variable here now reformat the code, save the project and execute the program now we can see the output in all these compressions only the variable p1 is equal to p3 and in the result two variable the answer true is stored for us and the other compression are not equal to each other and show us the false answer in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about comparing pointers in Golang. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's pointers concept. Go pointer to pointer or double pointer. A pointer is a special variable, so it can point to a variable of any type, even to a pointer. Basically, this looks like a chain of pointers. When we define a pointer to pointer, then the first pointer is used to store the address of the second pointer. This concept is sometimes termed as double pointers. How to declare a pointer to pointer in Golang? A pointer to a pointer is a form of chain of pointers. Normally, a pointer contains the address of a variable. When we define a pointer to a pointer, the first pointer contains the address of the second pointer, which points to the location that contains the actual value as shown below. A variable that is a pointer to a pointer must be declared as such. This is done by placing an additional asterisk in front of its name. For example, the following statement declares a pointer to a pointer of type int. var ptr asterisk asterisk int type. When a target value is indirectly pointed to buy a pointer to a pointer, accessing that value requires that the asterisk operator be applied twice. 
Now go to VS Code program to illustrate the concept of pointer to pointer. First, taking a variable of integer type var x int equals 100. Now taking a pointer of integer type var pt1 asterisk int equals address of x variable ampersand x. Now taking pointer to pointer to pt1, storing the address of pt1 into pt2, var pt2 asterisk asterisk int equals address of pointer 1, ampersand pt1. Now display x and pt1 and pt2 variables, fb the value of x equals set the variable x go to the next line fp the value of pt1 equals and set pointer 1 and go to the next line fp the value of pointer 2 equals and set the variable pointer 2 reformat the code now dereferencing the pointer to pointer fp value at the address of pointer 2 or asterisk pointer 2 equals asterisk pointer 2 and double pointer will give the value of variable x fp value at the address of pointer 2 or asterisk asterisk pt2 equals asterisk asterisk pt2 reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output first we see the value of the variable x which is 100 then we see the value of the variable pointer 1 in which the address of the variable x is stored and then we see the value of the variable pointer 2 in which the address of the variable pointer 1 is stored and now we see the address of the variable pointer 2 and finally we see the value of the variable pointer 2 which is preceded by two asterisks we have reached the end of this session i hope you have taken full advantage of this session until next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the structs concept. Structures in Golang Golang structure is a data type that allows you to store different properties under a single variable name. It is similar to a class in object-oriented programming that has only properties. It's very similar to a structure in C programming. A struct is a collection of data fields with declared data types. Golang has the ability to declare and create own data types by combining one or more types, including both built-in and user-defined types. 
Each data field in a strike is declared with a noun type, which could be a built-in type or another user-defined type. Strikes are the only way to create concrete user-defined types in Golang. Strike types are declared by composing a fixed set of unique fields. Strikes can improve modularity and allow to create and pass complex data structures around the system. You can also consider Strikes as a template for creating a data record like an employee record or an e-commerce product. Declaration of a struct type The declaration starts with the keyword type, then a name for the new struct, and finally the keyword struct. Within the curl brackets, a series of data fields are specified with a name and a type. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create and declaration a struct. First, go to Explorer and create a project folder for the example extracts and create a file like main.go create package main and main function Okay, for the example, we create a strike name address it has a state, CT, and zip code fields. Now declaring a struct type address and a struct. Curly brackets and set the field for the example a state. Type of it is a string CT. Type is a string and zip code and type of it is int. In the above, the type keyword introduces a new type. It's followed by the name of the type address and the keyword struct to illustrate that we are defining a struct. The struct contains a list of various fields inside the curly braces. Each field has a name and a type. We can also make them compact by combining the various fields of the same type as shown in the below. For the example, we comment this struct and define another struct again. Type address extract curly braces estate and city type of two fields is a string and zip code type of it is int the address struct and its fields are not exported to other packages because identifiers or struct name are start with a lower case letter in Golang, identifiers are exported to other package if the name starts being at uppercase letter. Otherwise, the accessibility will be limited within the package only. Okay, we could define a struct. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about declaration of a struct type. And in this session, we want to talk about the other structs concept. Creating instances of struct types. We can create instance from the struct in several different ways. The var keyword to create a struct instance. Declaring and initializing a struct instance using a struct literal. Declaring and initializing a struct instance using naming fields. 
Declaring and initializing a struct instance on initialized fields are set to their corresponding zero value. A struct instantiation using new keyword and a struct instantiation using pointer access operator. Now go to VS Code to illustrate how to creating instances of struct types. First way the var keyword to create a struct instance. First, we create a struct type like address, type, address, a struct, and set the fields like a state, type of it is a string, city, and type is a string and zip code and type is int reformat the code and save the project we define an address struct now go to the main function and create instance from the address struct first by var keyword var name like a and name of struct address First, we declare the variable of the struct type and all the struct fields are initialized with their zero value. Now, display the struct for the example fp a. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the code. First, go to the project folder and run the program now we can see the output we create a struct and display it because we don't initialize it it doesn't have any values go to the next way declaring and initializing a struct instance using a struct literal go to the code remove the previous code For the example, create a struct variable like a1. a1 colon equals name of a struct type, address, curly brackets, and initialize the value for the example for the state set Texas and for city set the Dallas value and for the zip code we set one two three four five go to the next line and display the struct by the following code fp address one column and a one reformat the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output we could define and initialize its fields by using a struct literal Go to the next way. Declaring and initializing a struct instance using naming fields. First, clear the last code. For the example, create a struct variable like a2. a2 colon equals address curly brackets. Now set name of field and assign value to it like a state like California and set field name city and set value for the example San Diego and zip code set value six seven eight nine zero and go to the next line and display the strike by the following code fp address to column a2 reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we could initialize the struct instance by field name go to the next way 
Declaring and initializing a struct instance, an initialized fields are set to their corresponding zero value. For the example, create a struct variable like a3 and initialize it. First clear the last code. a3 colon equals address and set a state and value takes us. Go to the next line and display the struct by this code fp address 3 column and a3. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output because we don't initialize any value for the other fields of address struct, zero value assigned to them. Now go to the next way. Struct instantiation using new keyword. An instance of a struct can also be created with the new keyword. It's then possible to assign data values to the data fields using dot notation. Create a struct variable like a4 by new keyword and pass name of a struct as type. First clear the last code. A4 colon equals new and set the name of a struct address. Now for assigned values to struct fields, we can access to them by dot notation. First write name of instance A4 and then set dot and access to struct fields. For the example, A4 dot state and then initialize the field by equals to equals for the example Illinois a4 dot city equals Chicago and go to the next line a4 dot zip code equals for the example 2 4 6 8 and 0 Go to the next line and display the create struct variable by the following code fp address 4 columns a4 reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we could define a struct instance by new keyword and initialize a struct fields by dot notation Go to the next way. Struct instantiation using pointer address operator creates an instance of structs by using a pointer address operator is denoted by ampersand symbol. First clear the last code. And create a variable like a5 var a5 equals ampersand name of struct address now set the struct fields by notation go to the next line a5 dot state equals for the example new york go to the next line a5 dot city equals new york city and set the zip code a5 dot zip code equals 13579 go to the next line and display the struct instance created fp address 5 colon set variable a5 reformat the code save the project and execute the program we can see the output, we could define an struct instance by using a pointer address. Okay, in this session, we could create instances of struct types in several ways. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. 
In the previous session, we talked about creating instances of struct types. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's structs concept. Nested struct type. A structure which is the field of another structure is known as nested structure. A struct can be nested by creating a struct type using other struct types as the type for the fields of a struct. Nesting one struct within another can be a useful way to model more complex structures. Now you can see the scene tags for nested struct type. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create the nested structure. First create a struct named author type author the struct curl brackets and set the variable name a string and branch a string and year int and set a comment for export these extract o sir extract because first letter of o sir extract is uppercase so the o sir extract is an exported so you must use a comment above the structure name now create another struct like hr that contains a field as author struct type hr struct curl brackets in this case we define an author struct variable for the example we set name of this variable as details details Author. Set a comment for export this extract. HR extract. We format the code and save the project. Now we could define two extracts first, author and second, HR. Now go to main function and create an instance of HR extract. Create a variable, write result from hr extract result, colon equals hr curly brackets and initialize its parameters, details that it points to author extract, so we create an instance from author and initialize it. Details author and assign the value like Julia and for branch ECE e, and here is 2021 reformat the code and go to the next line and display the values FP details of O sir go to the next line and FP result Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output. In this example, we were able to create two different structures and use them nested in each other and display the values of its variables. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about nested struct type. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's structs concept. Add method to struct type. Go language support methods. Go methods are similar to Go function with one difference. The method contains a receiver argument in it. With the help of the receiver argument, 
the method can access the properties of the receiver. Here, you are allowed to define a method whose receiver is of a struct type. This receiver is accessible inside the method. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create a receiver method. Okay, first create a struct name author. Type author struct curl erases and define fields for the struct like name a string branch a string and salary int now create a method with a receiver of author type first func keyboard func now set a struct variable as receiver for the example a author then name of function show in the parentheses we can set parameters and out of it we can define return time in this case we don't have parameters and return time now go to curly brackets or otherwise body of receiver method and write out statements for the example display the author variables for this method fp authors name a dot name and fp branch name a dot branch and go to the next line fp salary a dot salary reformat the code and save the project now go to main function, create an author extract and initialize it, then call the receiver. First initializing the values of the author structure, for the example, result colon equals author for the name value key and branch cse and salary 29000 now calling the show method as receiver result dot show reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we could define a strike by three fields then create a receiver method and assign it to author a struct and in this method display the values of author properties then invoke the receiver method in main function and see the results in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about add method to a struct type. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's structs concept. Methods with pointer receiver. In Go language, you are allowed to create a method with a pointer receiver. 
With the help of a pointer receiver, if a change made in the method will reflect in the color which is not possible with the value receiver. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create a method with pointer receiver. First create a struct name author. Type author struct curl brackets. Define fields for this struct like name, a string, and branch. Type of it is a string. Okay. Now create a method with the receiver of author type as pointer. Define func. Set a receiver for author struct as a pointer. A asterisk author. And define name for this method. For the example, show. And set a parameter like a branch type is a string go to the curly brackets and set a statement for this method asterisk a dot branch equals a branch in this case we assign new branch as a branch in old branch variable. Now go to main function, create an author struct and initialize it, then call the receiver method. Initializing the values of the author struct, for example, result colon equals author name Robert and branch CSE. First display author's name and branch names before the change. Go to the next line FP B for changing FP O source name result dot name and fp o source branch result dot branch reformat the code and save the project now calling a pointer go to the next line define a pointer like p colon equals and ampersand result now calling the show method and displaying again author's name and branch names after the change p dot show and set a new branch variable for the example e c e and again display authors and branch name we copy these lines and paste here after changing, reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output. We could define a strike by two fields, then create a receiver method and assign it to also strike as pointer. And in this method, set a new branch variable as a branch. Then display author's name and branch names before the invoke of method receiver and changes. Then invoke the receiver method in main function and display again also's name and branch name after invoke the receiver method and see the branch value has changed because we use from receiver method by the pointer arguments. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about methods with pointer receiver. And in this session, we want to talk about the other structs concept. 
method can accept both pointer and value. As we know that in Go, when a function has a value argument, then it will only accept the values of the parameter. And if you try to pass a pointer to a value function, then it will not accept or vice versa. But a Go method can accept both value and pointer whether it is defined with pointer or value receiver. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how the method can accept pointer and value. First create author a structure. Type author a struct. Curl braces says two variable name and branch name a string and branch a string now define a method with a pointer receiver of author type func define receiver a asterisk author set a name like show one and set parameter a branch a string go to the method and asterisk a dot branch equals a branch in this case, we assign new branch in old branch variable. And create another method with the value receiver of author type. For the example, func value receiver a author set name show to. In this method, we set name field of author strike by Julia value. A dot name equals Julia. And display the field name. FP O sir name. a dot name and create a message for before changing fp before changing reformat the code and save the project now go to main function and create and initialize an instance of author struct go to main function Define a variable like result colon equals author name king and branch CSE. Display branch name before invoke the methods FP branch name before column result dot branch go to the next line now calling the show one method or pointer method with value result dot show one and set a new branch e c e go to the next line and display branch name after invoke the show one method fp branch name after changing result dot branch go to the next line and now calling the show two method or value method with a pointer ampersand result dot 
show to and display the author name after calling show to method fp o source name after column and result dot name reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output branch name is c s e before calling show one method and branch name is e c e after calling show one method and author's name is julia before invoke the show to method and author's name is kim after invoking the show to method and we could see that method can accept both value and pointer whether it's defined with pointer or value receiver in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about method can accept both pointer and value. In this session, we want to talk about the other structs concept. Assign default value for a struct field. Method of assigning a custom default value can be achieved by using constructor function. Instead of creating a struct directly, we create a function can be used to create an struct with a custom default value for the struct fields. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to assign default value for a struct field. First, create a struct named a student. Type a student struct curly braces and define fields for this struct name a string and age int set the comment above the struct name for exporting this student struct student struct now create a method for a student struct name instance to set default value for student fields. Funk. Set a receiver for a student struct as S. S asterisk a student. Name for this method. For the example, instant curl brackets in this case set the default value for two fields name and age if s dot name equals equals now s dot name equals robert and if s dot age equals equals zero s dot h equals 25 the compiler checks if the field values are empty so assigns the value defined in this method as default values okay set a comment for this method as export instant method reformat the code and save the project now go to main function and create instances of a student struct and initialize values first declare an instance without assigned values a student one colon equals a student now invoke the instant method for initializing default values student one dot instant and 
Display this student struct. FP student one. Second, declare another student instance and just initialize name value for it and don't assign any value for age field. Go to the next line. Student two colon equals the student and set name Julia. Student to dot instant and display this is student struct fp the student two and third declare another student instance and just initialize age value for it and don't assign value for name field go to the next line define a variable like a student three colon equals a student and set just age value age for the example three and invoke the instant method student three dot instant go to the next line and display this student fp student three reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output. For a student one, we don't have initialized student fields. So after invoking instance method, the name and age fields value set to default value. Means Robert and 25. For a student two, we don't have initialized age field. So after invoke instance method, the age field value set to default value. Means Julia and 25. And for student three, we don't have initialized name field. So after invoking instance method, the name field value set to default value means Robert and 30. So we could assign default value for extract via a method. Okay. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about assign default value for struct field. And in this session, we want to talk about the others structs concept. Compare structs with the different values assigned to data fields. Structs of the same type can be compared using compression operator. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the concept of struct compression by using equals to operator. First define a struct named student and set fields for it. Type student Extract and set fields name a string and age int set comment for exported extract now go to main function creating two variables of a student structure and initialize them a student one colon equals a student name keen and age twenty seven and define second variable and initialize it same variable one a student two colon equals a student name Kim and age 27 
Now checking if a student 1 is equal to a student 2 or not by using equals to operator. Reformat the code, save the project and go to the next line. If a student 1 equals to student 2 print a message for us fp variable student 1 is equal to variable student 2 and else copy this line set here and set is not equal to variable student 2 okay reformat the code and save the project execute the program go run main.go now we can see the output variable student 1 is equal to variable student 2 the two variables are equal to each other and we could compare two struct instances together in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about compare structs with the different values assigned to data fields. And in this session, we want to talk about the other structs concept. Copy a struct type using value and pointer reference. A struct variable in Golang can be copied to another variable easily using the assignment statement. Any changes made to the second struct will not be reflected back to the first struct. We use two ways to do this. First, copy by value and second, copy by reference. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate copying a structure to another variable. First, we want to talk about copy by value. Create a struct named a student and set variable for it. Type a student a struct declaring variables name a string and marks int. 64 and set the comment for the export this extract student extract now go to the main function creating an instance of the student struct type and initialize it for the example a student one colon equals a student for name Julia and for the mark 90. Display the created instance FP a student one column student one. Now copying the struct student to another variable by using the assignment operator. Create an instance named student2 and copy student1 inside it. Go to the next line. Student2 colon equals student1. Display the created instance fp student2 colon student now let's changing values of a student to a struct after copying for the example a student two dot name equals robert 
and student two dot marks equals ninety five. Now display two students after changing values. Go to the next line. FP first set a message display to the students after changes go to the next line fp the student one column set a student one variable and go to the next line fp a student two column and set the variable student two okay reformat the code save the project and run the program now we can see the output modifications are applied to the second instance made from student struct and no changes are made to the first instance and we see a student 2 by new values and a student y by previous values now let's go to talk about copy by reference first create a struct named person and sets variable for it first clear the last code type person struct declaring variables name a string and id int64 set the comment for export this struct person struct go to the main function creating an instance of the person struct type and initialize is for the example person one colon equals person for name team and for id one one two two three three display the created instance fp person one column person one now referencing the struct person to another variable by using the ampersand operator here it is the pointer to the struct for the example define person variable named person two go to the next line person to colon equals and person person one display the created instance fp person two colon person two now let's changing value of person to a struct after copying for the example person two dot name equals Edward, go to the next line, person 2.id equals 4455666. Now display two students after changing values. First set a message, fp display two persons after changing go to the next line fp person one and fp person two reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output in this case of pointer reference to the struct the underlying memory location of the original struct and the pointer to the struct will be the same. Any changes made to the second struct will be reflected in the first struct also. Pointer to a struct is achieved by using the ampersand operator. It's allocated on the heap and its address is shared. Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye.
Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about copy struct type using value and pointer reference. And in this session, we want to talk about the other structs concept. Anonymous structure and field in Golang. First, anonymous structure. In Go language, you are allowed to create an anonymous structure. An anonymous structure is a structure which does not contain a name. It's useful when you want to create a one-time usable struct. You can create an anonymous struct using the following syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the concept of anonymous struct. First, creating and initializing the anonymous struct. Now go to main function and define a variable and assign a struct to it without any name. For the example, a student colon equals a struct. And in this curly brackets, define a struct variable name a string id int for the example 64 and h int 32 and now open another curly brackets and initialize define a structure variables name julia id 123 age 30 now display the anonymous struct fp the student reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run main dot go now we can see the output. We could define an anonymous struct, initialize it, and display its variables. Now go to styles and continue. Second, anonymous fields. In a Go structure, you are allowed to create anonymous fields. Anonymous fields are those fields which do not contain any name. You just simply mention the type of the fields and Go will automatically use the type as the name of the field. You can create anonymous fields of the struct using the following syntax. In a struct, you are not allowed to create two or more fields of the same type. If you try to do so, the compiler will give an error. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the concept of anonymous fields. First, clear the last code. In this case, creating a structure with anonymous fields. Type a student struct and set the type of variables a string int now go to main function assigning values to the anonymous fields of the student strike for this case define a variable and assign values to it for the example value colon equals a student curly brackets and sets the value for the variables Machine 123 for int. Now display the values of the fields. FP. We assign a string to a student name and int to a student ID. A student name value dot a string and a student id sign value dot int we format the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output 
we could define an anonymous fields initializing and display them okay we have reached the end of this session i hope you have taken full advantage of this session until next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about interface concept. Interfaces in Golang Go language interfaces are different from other languages. In Go language, the interface is a custom type that is used to specify a set of one or more method signatures. Interface is abstract, so you are not allowed to create an instance of the interface. But you are allowed to create a variable of an interface's type and this variable can be assigned with a concrete type value that has the methods the interface requires. Or in other words, the interface is a collection of methods as well as custom type. How to create an interface? To create interface, use interface keyword followed by curly braces containing a list of method names, along with any parameters or return values the method are expected to have. Now you can see the syntax. Declare an interface type and methods does not have a body. And interfaces act as a blueprint for method sets they must be implemented before being used. Type that satisfies an interface is said to implement it. How to implement interfaces? In the Go language, it is necessary to implement all the methods declared in the interface for implementing an interface. The Go language interfaces are implemented implicitly and it does not contain any specific keyword to implement an interface, just like other languages. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to implement an interface. First go to Explorer and create a project folder, like interfaces, and create a file named main.go package main and function name okay first create an interface named rectangle and has two methods for calculate rectangle perimeter and area type rectangle interface and create two methods perimeter return type is load 64 and area return type is again load 64 set a comment for this interface for export rectangle interface in order to be able to use the methods of an interface we need to implement them to implement the methods of an interface we need to create a struct now creating an struct type calculate Set a name for this struct and a struct. This struct has two fields, length and type of it is float 64 and the other is widths. Type of it is in again float 64. Set a comment for export this struct. Calculate extract. 
Okay, now implementing methods of rectangle interface via struct receiver. First, implement perimeter method. Func set a receiver C calculate perimeter and return type float 64 and this method return c dot width plus c dot length and total multiplication 2 set a comment for this method pre meter method and second implement area method func set receiver c calculate and area method return type is below 64 and set a body for this method return c dot width multiplication c dot length set a comment for this method area method okay now go to main function for accessing elements of the rectangle interface go to the main function first create an interface variable from rectangle and then initialize it by calculate struct var r rectangle define a variable from rectangle interface and in the next line we initialize r by the calculate struct r equals calculate for the example 20 and 10. Now invoke rectangle interface methods and display them. Go to the next line fp perimeter of rectangle column r dot perimeter. Go to the next line fp area of rectangle column r dot area reformat the code save the project and execute the program first go to project folder cd interface and run the project by the command go run main dot now we can see the output. In this case, first create an interface has two methods for calculate a rectangle perimeter and area. In order for us to be able to use them, we have to implement them. So we create a struct name calculate and implement two rectangle interface methods and assign them to a struct. Now define variable from rectangle interface and initialize it via calculate struct and calling two interface methods and see the result. Assigning an instance of calculate struct to a variable of rectangle interface type works because calculate struct implements both perimeter and area method of the calculate. The type is not checked during this assignment Instead, it is enough to check that the type assigned does implement perimeter and area method. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about how to create and implement interfaces. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's interface concept. 
Empty interface type. The type interface open and close curly braces is known as the empty interface and it is used to accept the values of any type. The empty interface doesn't have any methods that are required to satisfy it and so every time satisfies it. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use empty interface. First go to main function and define two variables by different types and assign them. For the example, var i int equals a hundred and var s a string equals hello now go out of main function and create a function that has parameter as an empty interface func set a name for the example kind and set a parameter as an empty interface i interface In body of method, we want to see the value and type of arguments that pass from main function. So we write ff the type of percent v is percent t uppercase set conversion character t uppercase for the type and set variable i and again i reformat the code and save the project now go to main function and invoke define kind method and pass two created variables as arguments to it and see the result go to main function first kind by i variable set i variable and in the next line invoke kind by s variable Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output. The type of 100 is int, and the type of hello is a string. Through the empty interface, we were able to send different values to our method. For the example, we once sent a type of integer, and once a type of a string to our method and view the output. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about empty interface type. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's interface concept. Access underlying variable of interface. The underlying variable can be accessed in two ways. First, type assertion. And second, type switch. Type assertion provides a way to access the underlying variable inside the interface value of the interface by asserting the correct type of underlying value and type switch enables us to do above type assertion in series. Type assertions in Go language, type assertion is an operation applied to the value of the interface. Or in other words, type assertion is a process to extract the values of the interface. Now you can see the syntax. Here, a is the value of the expression of the interface and t uppercase is the type also known as assert type. The type assertion is used to check that the dynamic type of its operand will match the asserted type or not. If the T is of concrete type, 
then the type assertion checks the given dynamic type of A is equal to the T. Here, if the checking process successfully, then the type assertion returns the dynamic value of A. Or if the checking fails, then the operation will panic. If the T is of an inner phase type, then the type assertion checks the given dynamic type of a satisfies T. Here, if the checking process successfully, then the dynamic value is not extracted. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use the type assertion. First define a function that accepts a parameter as an empty interface. For the example, func display a variable as empty interface. Now extracting the value of A and define type of A variable. For the example in this case, we set a string type for a variable. Value colon equals A dot open and close parentheses and define type a string. Now display the value fp value colon set variable value now go to main function and invoke the display function and pass the arguments as a string to it first define a string variable and initialize it var result equals and set value go pro Programming language. Now call the display function and send the result variable to it. Display and set the result variable. Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output value colon go programming language. First, we define a function that accepts a parameter as an empty interface and assign a string type to it. Then call the function and pass a string value as argument to it and see the result. In this example, if we change the value type of value variable from a string to e, then the program panic. Now check this problem. We change the value of result into an integer, for the example 123, save the project and execute the program again. Now we can see the error. So we want to overcome this problem. First clear the last code. Save the project and ready to write. First, define a function that accepts an argument as an empty interface again. For the example, func display set variable a as empty interface go to the body. Okay. Now extracting the value of A and define type of a variable. For the example, in this case we set a string type for a variable and assign it to two variables like value and OK value comma OK colon equals A dot open and close parentheses and set a string as a type. Now display the value ff value colon percent v status is percent v and come here and sets value and ok variable here, if the type of the A is equal to a string, 
Then the value contains the dynamic value of the A. And OK will set to true. And if the type of the A is not equal to a string, then OK set to false and value contains zero value. And the program does not punish. Now go to main function and invoke the display function and pass the arguments to it. First, define a string variable and initialize it var result equals go programming language and call the display function and send the result variable to it. Display set the result variable. Okay. And second, define an integer variable and initialize it. Go to the next line var result two equals for the example 123 and call display function and set the result to variable to it display and set the result variable to reformat the code save the project and execute the program Now we can see the output. Value for a string is Go programming language and status is true. And value for integer is zero and the status is false. In this case, for the string type, OK variable contains true value. And for the integer type, OK variable contains false value. And it does not give an error. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about type assertions. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's interface concept. Type switch. In Go interface, type switch is used to compare the concrete type of an interface with the multiple types provided in a case statements. It is similar to type assertions with only one difference i.e. case specifies types not the values you can also compare a type to the interface type let's go to vs code program to illustrate how to use type switch first define a function that accepts an argument as an empty interface for the example func display says a variable like a as m interface now define switch keyword and a dot type for using type switch switch a dot open and close parentheses type Now set different cases for type of A variable. For the example case int column and set a statement for this case for the example display type and value of A variable f f type percent t uppercase dash dash and value colon percent v like a slash n and set for type a and set for the value a dot open and close parentheses and set int value save the project now do this for a few other data types for the example case a string Column. set a message copy this line and paste for a string and sets 
the type for a to a string and set another case case float 64 column and again paste the message and set type for a to float 64 and define default for the case where none of the data types are available default column and set a message type not found now go to main function and invoke the display function and send different values of different data types to the method as arguments save the project go to main function call display function and set an integer value as argument first display 123 go to the next line and the other case set a string value as argument display set a string value go to programming language go to the next line and the other case set a float 64 value as argument display 100.55 and go to the next line and the other case set a bool value as argument display set true value reformat the code and save the project and execute the program now we can see the output type int value 123 type string value go programming language and type float 64 and value is 100.55 for the fourth case means boolean when we call the display method we send the value of boolean to the method as an argument since no case is performed for the boolean data type so the defined case is called and we see type not found message okay in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about a strings concept. A strings in Golang. In Go language, a strings are different from other languages like Java, C++, Python, and etc. It is a sequence of variable width characters where each and every character is represented by one or more bytes using UTF-8 encoding. Or in other words, strings are the immutable chain of arbitrary bytes, including bytes with zero value, or a string is a read-only slice of bytes and the bytes of the strings can be represented in the Unicode text using UTF-8 encoding. Due to UTF-8 encoding, Golang string can contain a text which is the mixture of any language present in the world, without any confusion and limitation of the page. Generally, strings are enclosed in double quotes. String literals In Go language, string literals are created in two different ways. First, using double quotes here the string literals are creating using double quotes this type of a string support escape character but does not span multiple lines this type of string literals is widely used in golang programs second using backticks here the string literals are created using backticks and also known as row literals Row literals do not support escape characters, can span multiple lines, and may contain any character except backtick. It is generally used for writing multiple line message in the regular expression and in HTML. 
Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use strings. First, go to Explorer and create a project folder. For the example, strings and create a file named like main.go go to the file and create package main and create main function okay creating and initializing a variable with a string using shorthand declaration for the example name one colon equals and set a value for this variable like king second creating and initializing a variable with a string using var keyboard and using double quote and adding escape character go to the next line define var name to type is a string equals go programming and set a escape character like backslash n and language and third creating and initializing a variable with a string using var keyboard using back ticks as in raw literals and adding escape character var name three type is a string equals backtick go programming and set sk character like backslash n language now display these string variables fp name one fp name two and fp name three reformat the code and save the projects go to the terminal first go to project folder cd strings and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output the first variable is printed normally pim and in the second variable we have used escape character which causes a part of the text to be transferred to the next line go programming in a line and language in another line but in the third variable we have used raw literals and inside it we have used escape character but raw literals do not support escape characters and the value of the variable is displayed in full on one line in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about string literals. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Strings are immutable. In Go language, strings are immutable. Once a string is created, the value of the string cannot be changed or in other words, strings are read-only. If you try to change the value, the compiler will throw an error. Now, let's go to VS Code program to illustrate that strings are immutable. First, create and initialize a variable with a string using shorthand declaration. For the example, define a variable like value colon equals shorthand declaration and set a value for this variable welcome to go programming 
language. Now display this variable f p value. Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output. Welcome to Go programming language. But we want to change one of character of value string. For the example, we want to change index number one to G character. Now write value index number one equals backtex G. If you try to change the value of the string, then the compiler will to an error. You can see cannot assign to value number one. So we set comment for this code and we cannot change a value of a string variable because it is immutable. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about that strings are immutable. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Iterate over a string. You can iterate over a string using four range loop. This loop can iterate over the Unicode code point for a string. Now you can see the syntax. Here, the index is the variable which stores the first byte of UTF-8 encoded code point and CHR stores the characters of the given string and STR is a string. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to iterate over a string. First, define a string variable and initialize it. For the example, value colon equals go programming language. Now create a range in the for loop for iterate characters of value a string for index ch colon equals range in value and in this case we want to display index number and index value of each character of value string so ff value of index percent d conversion character set for index number is and conversion character for characters is c lowercase percent c lowercase so set it for character backslash n and set index and ch reformat the code Save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output. We succeed to print all the characters of the desired string separately with its index number. For the example, value of index 0 is G uppercase, value of index 1 is O lowercase, and value of index 20 is A lowercase. Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about iterate over a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Access the individual byte of the string. 
The string is of a byte, so we can access each byte of the given string. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to access the bytes of the string. First creating and initializing a string. str colon equals set value go programming. Now accessing the bytes of the given string by define a for loop. For i colon equals zero i less than len of string variable in this case is str and i plus plus for set a condition for loop we used from the len method to obtain the length of the string so in the body statement write our quotes ff index percent d equals percent c and ascii code equals percent v for conversion character for percent d set i and percent c str index i and percent v str index i again display index number of byte by invoke i variable and display index value by str index i and percent c as conversion character and display ascii code of each byte character by percent v as conversion character for str i reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output for the example index 8 equals a and ascii code equals 97 or index 5 equals o and ascii code equals 111 so we could access index value and ascii code of each character of a string in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about access the individual byte of the string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Find the length of the string. In Golang, you can find the length of the string using two functions. One is len and another is run count in a string using len function it returns the number of bytes of the string using run count in a string function it returns the total number of run presence in the string now let's go to vs code program to illustrate how to find the length of the string First, creating and initializing a string using shorthand declaration. So, define a variable like str colon equals and set a string value. Welcome to go programming language. Display the string variable fp a string value and set variable str now finding the length of the string using length function so define a variable like length one colon equals and call length function and set str variable as argument now displaying the length of the string fp length one by len function colon and set length one here and in another case 
we want to find the length of the string using round count in a string function so define another variable like length to colon equals Run count in a string is in package UTF-8. So invoke UTF-8, UTF-8 dot run count in a string and set str variable as argument. So go to the next line and display the length of a string again. FP length to by round count in a string function colon and set variable length to reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output length 1 by length function is 34 and length 2 by wrong count in a string function is 34. We could find lengths of a string variables by two ways. First by length function and the other by wrong count in a string function. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about the find the length of the string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Trim a string in Golang. You can trim a string in different ways using the following list of functions. All these functions are defined under a strings package. So you have to import a strings package in your program to access this function. First is trim. This function is used to trim the string all the leading and trailing Unicode code points which are specified in this function. Now you can see the syntax. Here, str represent the current string and cut str represents the elements which you want to trim in the given string now let's go to vs code program to illustrate how to trim a string in golang now create and initialize two strings using shorthand declaration first Declare a string and assign value to it, which includes a number of exclamation marks. So define variable str1 colon equals exclamation mark well come to go programming language and exclamation mark again and declare another string and assign value to it which contains a number of at sign and dollar sign str2 colon equals at sign at sign this is the tutorial of go lang and dollar sign dollar sign before trimming we now display these two variables first display a message fp strings before trimming and display two variables fp str1 set str1 and in the next line fp str2 and set str2 variable 
Now trimming the given strings using trim function. First define a variable like result one colon equals a strings package a strings dot trim. First name of a string in this case is str1 and set the string to be trimmed from the current string for the example here is exclamation marks okay the trim method removes the exclamation marks whether it appears inside the string value and do this for second variable define another variable like result to colon equals call a strings package dot invoke trim function name of a string is str2 and set the string to be trimmed from the current string for the example here is at sign and dollar sign at sign and dollar sign now we want to display the result after trimming a strings value go to the next line and copy these three lines paste here and a strings after trimming and change variable result one and result two reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we were able to modify our desired string throughout the trim function and exclamation marks and dollar sign has removed from first and end of string value okay in order not to prolong the title of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about trim a string in Golang. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Trim left. This function is used to trim the left hand side, specified in the function Unicode code points of the strings. Now you can see the syntax. Here, str represent the current string and cut str represent the left hand side elements which you want to trim in the given string. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate trim left hand side elements from the string. First creating and initializing two string using shorthand declaration. In this case, declare a string and assign value to it, which includes a number of exclamation marks and asterisk. Now define a variable like str1 colon equals and set value exclamation marks welcome to go programming language and asterisk go to the next line and declare another string and assign value to it which contains a number of at sign and dollar sign define variable str2 colon equals set value at sign at sign this is a tutorial of go lang and dollar sign dollar sign before trimming, we now display these two variables fp strings before trimming and display two variables fp str1 set variable str1 and fp str2 and set variable str2 
Now trimming the given strings using trim left function. First define a variable like result one colon equals package strings dot invoke trim left name of a string str1 and set the string to be trimmed from the current string for the example here is exclamation marks and do this for another string result to colon equals strings package dot trim left name of a string in this case it is str2 and set the string to be trimmed from the current string for the example add sign now we want to display the results after trimming values so copy these two lines paste here after trimming and set variables name result one and result two reformat the code save the projects and execute the program now we can see the output we were able to modify our desired string through the trim left function and exclamation marks and at sign has removed from a string value in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about trim left a string, and in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Trim right. This function is used to trim the right hand side, specified in the function Unicode code points of the strings. Now you can see the syntax. Here, str represents the current string and cut str represents the right hand side elements which you want to trim in the given string. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate trim right hand side elements from the string. First creating and initializing two strings using shorthand declaration. Now, Declare a string and assign value to it, which includes a number of exclamation marks and asterisks. For the example, define a variable like str1 colon equals exclamation mark welcome to go programming language and asterisk mark. And declare another string and assign value to it which contains a number of at sign and dollar sign. Define another variable str2 colon equals at sign at sign. This is the tutorial of Golang and dollar sign dollar sign. Before trimming, we now display these two variables. First, write a message fp strings before trimming and display two variables fp str1 variable str1 and fp str2 colon and name of this variable str2 now trimming the given strings using trim right function first define a variable like result one colon equals from the strings package invoke trim right function first name of a string str1 
and set the string to be trimmed from the current string. For example, here is asterisk. Okay, the trim right method removes of the asterisk in right hand side of the string value. Do this for another variable. Define another variable result to column equals a strings dot trim right name of a string str2 and set the string to be trimmed from the current string for the example here is dollar sign now we want to display the results after trimming right strings value so copy these three lines and go to this line and paste here and change this value after and change the result one and change str2 to result to reformat the code save the project and execute the program go to the package folder and go run dot package slash main dot go now we can see the output we were able to modify our desired string through the trim right function and asterisk and dollar sign has removed from a strings value in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about trim right a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Trim a space. This function is used to trim all the leading and trailing white space from the specified string. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to trim white space from the string. First, creating and initializing two string using shorthand declaration. Now, declare a string and assign value to it, and we put some white space at the beginning and end of the string values. Define a string like str1 colon equals, put some white space, asterisk, and welcome to go programming language asterisk and some white space and declare another string and assign value to it that value of this string is source and end with two at sign symbol define str2 variable colon equals some put spaces add sign add sign this is tutorial uh, go blank add sign add sign some put spaces before trimming we now display these two variables fp first print a message the strings before trimming and display these two variables fp str1 str1 and fp str2 colon and set str2 variable okay now trimming wide space from the given strings using trim space function define a variable like result1 colon equals a strings package and call trim space function trim space function and set name of a string str1 go to the next line define another variable write result2 colon equals a strings package and invoke trim space function and set str2 as argument for this function now we want to display the results after trimming a space a strings value so copy these three lines and paste in this line and change these values 
after result one result two reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we were able to modify our desired string through the trim space function before calling the trim space function, there are empty spaces at the beginning and end of the string values. But after calling the trim space function, the empty spaces at the beginning and end of the string's values are deleted. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about trim space a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Trim suffix. This method is used to trim the trailing suffix a string from the given string. If the given string does not contain the specified suffix a string, then this function returns the original string without any changes. Now you can see the syntax. Here, str represents the original string and suffstr represents the suffix string. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to trim a suffix string from the given string. First, creating and initializing two string using shorthand declaration. Define a variable like str1 colon equals welcome to go programming language and define another variable like str2 and assign value to it like this is the tutorial of go link before trimming we now display these two variables first print the message fp strings before trimming and display these two variables fp str1 and fp str2 okay now trimming perfix a string from the given strings using trim suffix function first define a variable like result one colon equals from the strings package call trim suffix function trim suffix function first name of variable str1 and another argument is suffix for the example in this case we said programming language okay and define another variable like result to colon equals a strings package dot trim suffix function set name of variable str2 and set suffix string like for this case hello okay now we want to display this result after trimming suffix string values so copy these three lines and paste here change these values after and variables str1 to result1 and str2 to result2 reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we were able to modify our desired string through the trim suffix space function. For str1, after trimming, we have welcome to go. And 
For str2 variable after trimming, we have this is the tutorial of go. Using the trim suffix function, we were able to separate the value of the programming language from end of the variable one and return the rest to the variable. And in the second variable, because the desired value of the trim suffix was not present with the desired string, the original string was returned. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about trim suffix. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Trim prefix. This method is used to trim the leading prefix string from the given string. If the given string does not contain the specified prefix string, then this function returns the original string without any change. Now you can see the syntax. Here, str represent the original string and prefix str represent the prefix string. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to trim the prefix string from the given string. First, creating and initializing two strings using shorthand declaration. str1 colon equals welcome to go programming language str2 colon equals this is the tutorial of go lang. Okay. Before trimming, first we display these two variables. fp set a message strings before trimming and display these two variables fp str1 and fp str2. Now trimming prefix string from the given strings using trim prefix function. So define another variable like result one colon equals from the strings package invoke trim prefix function trim prefix function first set a string str1 and set prefix value. For the example, in this case, welcome to. And define another variable, result to, colon equals, a strings package, call trim prefix, set name of variable, str2, and set prefix. For the example, language in this case. Now we display the results after trimming perfect strings value. Copy these three lines and paste here and change this value str1 to result1 and str2 to result2. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output strings after trimming Go programming language and for variable 2 is this is the tutorial of Golang. We were able to modify our desired strings through the trim prefix function. Using the trim prefix function, we were able to separate the value of the welcome to from first of the variable and return the rest to the variable. And in the second variable, because the desired variable for the trim prefix was not present within the desired string, the original string was returned. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye.
Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about trim perfects in a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Split a string in Golang. In Go strings, you are allowed to split a string into s lines with the help of following functions. These functions are defined under strings package, so you have to import a strings package in your program for accessing these functions. First, a split. This function splits a string into all substrings separated by the given separator and returns a slice which contains these substrings. Now you can see the syntax. Here, str is the string and sep is the separator. If str does not contain the given set and sep is non-empty, then it will return a slice of length 1 which contain only str. Or if the sep is empty, then it will split after each utf-8 seconds. Or if both str and sep are empty, then it will return an empty slice. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to split a string. First creating and initializing the three string variables. str1 colon equals set value welcome comma to the comma go programming comma language go to the next line and define another variable like str2 colon equal set value my name is robert and go to the next line str3 colon equals set value i am a go programmer Now displaying a string variables before using a split function. fp str1 colon str1 fp str2 colon set str2 and fp str3 colon and set variable str3. Okay. Now splitting the given string using a split function. For the example, splits first string into all substrings separated by the comma separator and returns a slide with contains substrings. Define a variable like result one colon equals a strings package and call a split function first set variable name in this case str1 and set separator in this case comma for the other variables do this result to colon equals a strings package dot split and set str2 variable and set a space for this case Go to the next line and define another variable result three colon equals strings dot split function str three and for this case we set exclamation mark as separator. Now displaying the result variables for the example for the result one display value and type of variable go to the next line ff backslash n result one type percent t uppercase backslash t result one percent v backslash n and set result 1 and result 
1 now iterate result one string slice and display value of it by the range for loop for the example for underscore comma set a variable like value colon equals range in result one go to the body statement and set fp value and go out of the for loop and display the other variables for the example fp result two column result two and fp result three column and set variable result three okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output for the first variable define the comma character as a separator to use the split function and drop a slice of the string as the return value inside the result variable then display the value and type of the result variable and use the range for loop to iterate the result slice value we also do this for the second and third variables in third variables it does not contain the given separator then it will return a slice of length one which contain only self variable value in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about a split a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other a strings concept. A split after. This function a splits a string into all substrings after each instance of the given separator and returns a slice which contains these substrings. Now you can see the syntax. Here, str is the string and set is the separator. If str does not contain the given set and set is non-empty, then it will return a slice of length one which contain only str. Or if the set is empty, then it will split after each utf-8 sequence or if both str and sep are empty, then it will return an empty slice. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to split after a string. First, creating and initializing three string variables. Define str1 colon equals welcome comma to the comma go programming comma language go to next line and define another variable like str2 colon equal my name is robert and go to the next line and define another variable like str3 colon equals and set value i am a go programmer now displaying a string variables before using a split after function fp str1 colon comma str1 and str2 colon set variable str2 and in the next line fp str3 column and set variable str3 okay now splitting the given string using a split after function for the example splits first string into all substring separated by the comma and returns a slice which contains substrings go to the next line define a variable like result one colon equals a strings package 
and invoke a split after function. First set variable str1 and set separator. In this case, we set comma. Go to the next line and define another variable like result to colon equals strings dot split after set variable str2 and set s space as separator and define another variable result 3 colon equals strings dot split after set variable str3 and set exclamation mark as separator now display the result variables for the example, for the result 1, we display value and type of variable. So write ff backslash n result 1 type colon percent t uppercase as conversion character for type variable and backslash t and result 1 colon percent b and set variables result one and result one now iterate result one string slice and display value of it by the range for loop so define for loop for underscore comma define variable like value column equals range in result one slice Go to body statements and print the value. Now displaying the other variables, go out of the for loop and fp result to column set result to variable and in the next line fp result three column and set variable result we format the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output. For the first variable, define the comma character as a separator to use the split after function and drop a slice of the string as the return value inside the result variable and the separator itself is calculated as part of the separated string then display the value and type of the result1 variable and use the range for loop to iterate the result1 slice value we also do this for the second and third variables in third variables it does not contain the given separator then it will return a slice of length 1 which contain only its self variable value in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about split after in a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's strings concept. Split after n. This function splits a string into all substrings after each instance of the given separator and returns a slice which contains these substrings. Now you can see the syntax. Here, str is the string sep is the separator and n is used to find the number of substrings to return if n greater than zero then it returns at most n substrings and the last string substrings will not split if n equals to zero then it will return nil and if n less than zero then it will return all substrings now let's go to vs code program to illustrate how to split after n a string. First creating and initializing the three string variables str1 colon equals set value welcome comma to the comma 
go programming comma language go to next line define another variable like str2 column equals my name is robert and define third variable str3 column equals set value for the example i am a go pro grammar now displaying a string variables before using a split after n function fp str1 str1 and print str2 str2 and display third variable str3 str3 now splitting the given string using a split after end function for the example splits first string into all substrings separated by the comma separator and returns a slice which contains substring go to the next line define a variable like result one colon equals a strings package dot split after n function first set variable like str1 and set comma as separator and for third argument assign count value that determines the number of substrings to return for the example we said three and define another variable like result two colon equals strings dot spring after n set variable str2 and set a space as separator and set four number of substring and go to the next line and define another variable like result three colon equals package strings dot select a split after n function set variable str3 and set exclamation mark as separator and set one as number of substring now displaying the result variables for the example for the result one we display value and type of variable so write ff backslash n result one type colon percent t uppercase backslash t result one colon percent v backslash n and set result one comma result one now iterate result one a string a slice and display value of it by the range for loop go to the next line and define a for loop for underscore comma define a variable like value colon equals range in result one slice a string go to the body statement and print the value go out of the for loop range and display the other variables fp backslash n result two colon set variable result two and result three colon and display result reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output for the first variable define the comma character as a separator and set three value as number of substring to use the split function and drop a slice of the string as a return value inside the result variable then display the value and the type of the result variable and use the range for loop to iterate the result slice value and result one variable consists of three parts we also do this for the second and third variables in third variable it does not contain the given separator then it will return a slice of length one which contain only itself variable value
In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about a split after n in a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Compare strings in Golang. In Go language, the string is an immutable chain of arbitrary bytes encoded with UTF-8 encoding. You are allowed to compare strings with each other using different ways. First, compression operators and the other compare method. Using compression operators. Go string supports compression operators, i.e. equals to, not equals to, greater than equal to, less than equal to, greater than and less than. Here, the equals to and not equals to operator are used to check if the given strings are equal or not. And greater than equal to and less than equal to greater than and less than operators are used to find the lexical order. The results of these operators are of Boolean type, meaning if the condition is satisfied, it will return true, otherwise return false. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the concept of equals to and not equals to operator with strings. First creating and initializing four string variables using shorthand declaration. For the example, first str1 colon equals go that first character is uppercase and str2 colon equals go that all characters are uppercase and str3 colon equals go length and str4 colon equals go like first variable now checking the string are equal or not using equals to operator and assign result to a variable. For the example, check str1 and str2 and assign value to result 1. So define variable result 1 colon equals str1 equal to str2. Now we make a few more compressions for the example str2 and str3. So define a variable right result 2 colon equals str2 equal to str3. And result 3 colon equals str3 not equal to str Four. and result 4 colon equals another compression str1 equal equal to str4 now display the result variables fp result 1 colon and set variable result 1 it returns a boolean value and fp result 2 colon set result 2 and write for the other variables fp result 3 colon set result 3 and fp result 4 colon and set variable result 4 reformat the code save the projects and execute the program now we can see the output result 1 and result 2 is false and result 3 and result 4 is true 
we could compare four string variables together by the equal to and not equal to operators and see the results. Okay, now go to slides and continue. Second way, using compare method. You can also compare two strings using the built-in function compare provided by the string package. Now you can see the syntax. This function returns an integer value after comparing two strings in terms of vocabulary. The return values are return 0 if str1 equal to str2, return 1 if str1 greater than str2, and return minus 1 if str1 less than str2. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to compare a string using compare function. First clear the last code. So right FP a strings package dot compare function that it accept two arguments as A and B and type of them is a string. So select compare and set a variable or value of a string like hello and set two value like word. And do another comparison that two strings are similar together like fp strings package dot compare function and set two variable like together go blank and go blank and do another comparison that two strings are the same except that the first letter of the first string starts with a lowercase character and the first letter of the second string starts with the uppercase character so write fp strings package and invoke the compare function and set value for first variable go length and set value for second argument like go length reformat the code save the project and execute the program Now we can see the output. For first comparison, we have minus one value, and for second, zero value, and for third comparison, we have one value. So we could compare two variables by compare function and get int result. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about compare strings in Golang. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Join a string by delimiter or a separator. Concatenating strings. A strings package of Go provides a join method that can be used to join a string based upon a delimiter. Now you can see the syntax. As you can notice, this function takes a slice of a string and a delimiter and return a combined string joined by a delimiter. The delimiter or separator is placed between elements of the input string slice. Please note. It will return an empty string if the length of the input slice is zero. It will output a string compiled from the slice of strings if the input delimiter or separator is empty. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use concatenating strings in Golang. First, we create and initialize a string variable by assign join function that contains separator. So, first, 
define a variable like result colon equals strings package and select join function and first set a slice of a string variable a slice a string and initialize it like a b and c d and e f and set dash as separator comma colon dash now display the variable fp result in case two s lines is empty go to the next line result equals strings dot join set a slice of a string that is empty a slice a string and set dash as separator and again display the result and in case the separator is empty go to the next line result equals a strings package dot invoke join function set a slice of a string a string and initialize it for the example gh ij and kl and set null for separator go to the next line and display the variable fp result reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output a b dash c d dash e f and in second line null and in third null g h i j k l in first case we set dash as delimiter and it will output a slice of length three and in second case a slice is empty and it will output a empty string and in the third case separator is empty and it will output a string combined from the slice of a strings now we could see how to use concatenating strings in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about concatenating strings. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Golang contains function. You can search a particular text or a string or character within a string by using contains function. It returns output either true or false. Now you can see the syntax. If substr string found in s string, then it returns true. And if substr string is not found in a string, then it returns false. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use contains function in strings. For example, we want to check is there an AUS value within the Australia string or not. So write fp use a strings package and invoke contains function 
So for S string or for first variable, we said Australia. And for second string, we said A, U, S. Do another sample. We want to check is there G, E, R, S string by uppercase in Germany a string that first character starts by uppercase and all characters are lowercase. So we write F, P. A strings package select contains functions and set for first variable Germany and for second variable we set G E R by uppercase. Do another sample and we want to check S space. So write F B strings dot contains S space for first variable and a space for second variable. And as at least sample, we want to check is there one string in A23 string. So write FB strings dot contains for the example one, two, three for first variable and for second variable we said one. Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output. In the first example, the result is true because there is an AUS value inside Australia and in the second example, the Germany string does not have a GER string because all the characters in GER string are capitalized. But the Germany string is only its first character is uppercase and it is case sensitive and the result is false. And in the third sample, a space also consider as a string and result is true. And in the last sample, we see that a string one is inside a string one, two, three and the value of true is return. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about contains function in a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Golang fields function. The fields function breaks a string around each instance of one or more executive white space characters into an array. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use fields function in strings. First create a string variable and initialize it by a sentence. For the example, define a variable like message colon equals and set a string value like welcome to go programming language now we want to use from fields function that get message variable as arguments and return a string array so define a variable like message array colon equals set a strings package and invoke fields function and set message as argument now display a string array by range for loop for the example for underscore comma value colon equals range in message array and in body statement of the for loop, we display the value of each elements of array by fp value. Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output. 
we used from field function and could break a string to each instance of one or more consecutive white space character. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about fields function in a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Golang replace function. The replace function replaces some characters with some other characters in a string. Now you can see the syntax. N specifies number of characters that you want to replace in a string. If N is less than zero, there is no limit on the number of replacements. The function will replace all non-overlapping instances of old with new in a string S. If old is empty, then it inserts new between it each valid UTF-8 sequence of bytes in the string S. And if N is negative, then all instances of old will be replaced with new. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use replace function. First, create a string variable and assign the replace function to it. For the example, define result colon equals strings package dot replace function for first argument we set a string value for the example a b c d dash a b c d then select part of the created string as all arguments like a b and then define the string that is to replace the selected string as new string, like asterisk asterisk. And then specifies number of characters that you want to replace in a string as n arguments, like one. Now display the result variable fp result variable. And write another sample like the previous sample, except that we change the value of n to minus 1. So we see result equals strings dot replace a b c d dash a b c d a b new string asterisk and set n argument by minus one value and again display result okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output in the first sample because the value of n is one the value of the asterisk changed by only one value of AB. But in the second sample, because the value of N has changed below zero, any number of ABs will be replaced by asterisk. Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about replace function in a string. And in this session, we want to talk about the other strings concept. Golang index function. The index function enables searching particular text within a string. 
It works simply by matching the specific text in a string. Now you can see the syntax. If found, then it returns the specific position starting with 0, and if not found, then it will returns minus 1. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use index function in a string. For example, we want to search AUST value that first letter start by the uppercase character within the Australia starting by using index function. So write fp use a strings package and invoke index function set for first argument australia and set for second argument we set a u s t repeat the previous sample except that all the characters in the australia string are lowercase so fp strings dot index australia set value for first argument and for second argument we said AUSD and do another sample in this case we want to search a uppercase character in Australia string so we write FP strings package dot index function and set value for first argument Australia and for second argument we set a uppercase and do another sample in this case we search a lowercase character in australia string so we write fp strings dot index for first argument we set australia and for second variable we set a lowercase reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output for first we have zero for second we have minus one for third we have zero and for fourth we have five except for the second example the index of the desired thing is written in all samples now go to slides and continue. Go length last index function. The last index function enables searching particular text, character, or a string with a string. It returns the index of the last index of text or character in a string. Now you can see the syntax. If found, then it returns the specific position starting with 0, and if not found, then it will return minus 1. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use last index function. First, clear the last code. For example, we want to search a character within the Australia string by using the last index function. fp from strings package, we call last index function. For first argument, we set value Australia. And for second value, we set a lowercase and go to the next line and repeat the previous sample except that the character a is uppercase so fp strings package dot last index for first argument we set australia and for second value we set a uppercase reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output for first 
we have eight and for second we have minus one for the first example the index of the desired string is returned okay we have reached the end of this session i hope you have taken full advantage of this session until next session good